Yo, what's up? Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to Humans for bringing us in. And thanks to you for supporting the show. I'm Shane Raymer, and you're listening to that Sober Guy podcast on the special Veterans Day edition. And today's guest is Nick Kratzer. Nick is a former U.S. Marine, and he was injured during a training exercise, which led to several knee surgeries and a prescription for opiates. Uh, and that spiraled into years of addiction. Uh, Nick is now coming up on four years sober, and he now works on the Footprints to Recovery outreach team and oversees individuals who work in his local community to help improve access to addiction treatment and help bring awareness. Um, We're going to get to Nick in just a minute, but first, a huge shout out to all of our veterans out there. Thank you. We love you. We support you. And for the ones that are struggling uh, with addiction, we're here uh, for you uh, to, to reach out to. So please feel free to do that uh, at any time. There's plenty of resources out there. Uh, and we're starting today with uh, That Sober Guy and uh, Footprints to Recovery. Uh, so you can always do that there. And we'll leave links in the show notes and at the end of the episode for you too. Uh, and for anyone out there, that is also. Uh, be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com for past episodes, for resources. Uh, you can also connect with us on Instagram at Real That Sober Guy and on Twitter at Shane Raymer. A uh, couple of annou- uh, announcements, and then we're going to jump in with Nick here in just a second. We have two live shows coming up uh, December 6th at Journey Coffee in Vacaville, California, uh, with a couple of special guests to be announced. And then we also have uh, another show January 20th at the Hollywood Improv with special guest Darren uh, Prince, <clears throat> excuse me, and Brandon Novak. Uh, and that's January 20th. Uh, and a, a big shout out to the homie Mark Saratella for help putting this show together. For tickets and more information, you can go to thatsoberguy.com slash live shows. You can also go straight to the Improv website. That's improv.com slash Hollywood. Uh, and you can get tickets for that show on January 20th there. Um, real quick, if you need help, you can call Foundations Recovery Network, another valid resource. Uh, and, and big thanks to them for sponsoring uh, that sober guy. Uh, you can call them at 877-714-1318. They have nationwide residential and outpatient facilities. Um, and then uh, last, uh, we're about to drop this course, How to Navigate the First 90 Days of Sobriety. Uh, and that course is a digital podcast video course. We got a bunch of good homies uh, and professionals in the uh, treatment industry and community. Um, it's a digital, a digital course. So there's tons of content on there. Uh, we have some great resources on there, lots of interviews, different ways people stayed sober, uh, how they got sober and all kinds of tips and, uh, a little bit of fun on there too. So, uh, you can go to that sober and click on courses that launches on November 23rd. And I just wanted to say, you know, Jess and I were talking about how we can contribute, um, how we can involve this course course in some ways. And, um, I wanted to announce today too that I'm going to be giving away the course for free to all veterans for a lifetime. So as long as this course is available, which is hopefully forever, um, uh, any veteran who's struggling with addiction or who wants to check out the course, uh, you can feel free to hit us up uh, and let us know, and we'll get you uh, we'll get you a code that you can download that course for free. Uh, so stay tuned to reach out for that uh, if you're interested in that. All right, announcements are done. Nick Kratzer, what's up, man? How are you? Hey, good morning, Shane. How are you? I'm great. I'm good, dude. Did I pronounce your last name right, too? I forgot to ask you before we started. Is it Kratzer or Kratzer? It is Kratzer. You're, okay, cool. You're Kratzer. You're the only <laughs> one that ever gets it right the first time. <laughs> That's funny, man. I feel you on that because I get Rammer all the time. I'm like, it's, it's Raymer. I said, man, there'd be two M's if it was Rammer. It's Raymer. So good stuff, man. How, how are you, bro? I'm good, man. You know, up early. Uh, it's a bit cold here in Jersey. It's 35 degrees right now, but you know, uh, blessed to be alive, man, for real. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. I love, uh, I love technology connecting folks. You know, I'm all the way out in California. You're in, uh, in New Jersey. So, uh, we're talking some recovery today and I'm glad that, uh, that you and Allison reached out, uh, from footprints to recovery and connected with us. And now we're getting to talk some recovery on veterans day. Uh, you're obviously a veteran. When did you go into, uh, into the Marine Corps? I shipped out to Marine Corps boot camp, Paris Island, October 6th of 2003. Damn. Nice. So nice. Right, nice, right yeah. after, right after high school. Yeah. Yeah. Right after, um, let's see. Well, that would have been two years after nine 11 as well. So, I mean, it was, it was hot. I mean, it's still hot today, I guess, but it was hot back then too. Absolutely. You know, my, my father is a former Marine. I have uncles that were 
you know, in the armed forces, grandfathers both served, you know, Korea, Vietnam, uh, World War II. So it's kind of wow. like it, it's a, you know, it's, I take big pride in it, you know? Yeah. So it's ran in your family for a long time. That's cool. For sure. I feel like a twin right now. We both got red hoodies on. The only thing yours is cooler because it says Marines on it. But I just, <laughs> I, I just noticed that. I'm like, oh, shit, man. We're rocking it, man. Um, well, that was the that was the early phone call we coordinated, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> like, like a couple of chicks, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Three cool. minds think alike. That's right. That's right. Uh, so, man, let, let's uh, let's kind of dive into you a little bit, bro. Let's get to know you a little bit. Um, did you grow up in Jersey? Are, is that where you're from, or is that where you're at now? I did. I did. I grew up in New Jersey. Um, you know, we moved around a lot as a when I was a kid. You know, um, you know, parents just tried to make the best for for me and you know my younger my younger brother and sister so um you know i've lived in south carolina i've lived all throughout you know parts of new jersey and um you know this this is home to me yeah 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 it's cool man um and when um growing up like well what was that like for you in um you know like how, how was your childhood how was your you know just briefly you don't have to jump you know to and let feel free to if you'd sure. like to but um, you know, what was that like? Do you have a good childhood? Was it rough? Um, what was that? What did that look like? You know, from, from, you know, from a, like an inside the home perspective, it was, it was great. You know, um, both of my parents worked, you know, they always provided, you know, everything was, everything was, you know, quote unquote normal and, and, and good, but there was always something in me, you know, moving around a lot, being the new kid, you know, all those feelings of, of, you know, not, you know, not fitting in, you know, being mm -hmm. left out, I'm different. Um, you know, I, so I didn't necessarily want to start, you know, experimenting, but I kind of felt like it was, it was the end that I was looking for, yeah. you know, drinking and, you know, smoking pot. It was, it was like, it was the norm, you yeah. know, and now the norm is, Hey, let's steal our parents, you know, prescriptions, whatever they are and have, a pill party yeah. and it's just crazy how it's transformed into this massive epidemic where drinking in a little pot back in the day is now hardcore heroin and fentanyl and it's yeah. just it's it's sad man it's so sad that we're losing so many people every day did, did you see that um that they just approved that new drug that's even like a hundred times more powerful than fentanyl i can't remember the name it's of it it's, do you, i don't know if you know what it's called i was listening to a um, a, a show last night that was talking about it and I'm like man dude and I think it's like a tab you put it under your tongue and it, it dissolves and I'm like I'm thinking to myself like you know heroin fentanyl like you're getting strong like a hundred times stronger than that like how much of that like would just kill you like probably just a, a tiny 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 bit that shit is so scary and I think it's scary that <clears throat> that um you know, it's only supposed to be prescribed by doctors, I think, as it comes out. I don't think it's, it's been released just yet. Um, but eventually, just like anything, it, it somehow, it seems like it always finds its way out onto the street. And like, if that happens, what the hell happens then, you know? For sure. Like, it's, uh, I, I kind of feel like we have enough strong medication if you really need it yeah. um you know, yeah. between the morphine and the fentanyl and, and, and everything that, that modern technology has has allowed us to create why go a step above and, and create something even stronger i mean yeah. you know the the doctors i used to blame everybody else you know mm. whether it was my parents you know the teacher this one uh my dog it was you know it was never my fault <laughs> yeah. you know but but in reality it was it was all me um but the doctors didn't help i don't think that they were educated enough i don't think a lot of them really didn't care. You know, I could remember going to doctors and getting, you know, all these prescriptions, like enough to tranquilize, uh, you know, uh, 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 I don't know, like a, a large horse. And here he is just <laughs> writing scripts, see you next month, yeah. leave the money on the table with my receptionist and we're all good. Yeah. So I don't see it. I don't see it getting any better, um, especially with this new stronger opiate. Yeah, dude. Um, did you always want to be a Marine or do you always want to be in the military? Was that something that you knew as a kid? Like I got my, my, my son's four and his, you know, he wants to be a police officer, you know, so he's running around. I want to be a policeman, you know, is that something like, you know, that you as a child 
uh, had kind of dreamed about or knew that you wanted to do? Always, you know, my father grew up, you know, growing up, my dad would always, you know, talk to me and kind of instill that, you know, that, that discipline that, you know, the honor and things. Um, and, you know, used to see him in his, you know, pictures in his uniform. And, you know, I kind of, around that time, you know, growing up, that's, it was like cops and robbers, but it was like, oh, I'm going to play the Marine and cut down a, you know, a, a broom handle and, you know, chase you through the streets. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was always a lifetime, you know, uh, lifelong dream of mine. And um, that was, you know, one of my proudest moments ever was, was getting, you know, earning that Eagle Globe and Anchor and having my father who had gone through Paris Island decades before me be there at the ceremony. It was, oh, it wow. was, it was amazing. When you were in high school, were, were you starting to experiment like a lot of, a lot of, I mean, I know like for me in high school, that's probably when I started, like I started using drugs, drinking about 15 and like high school, it was all kind of fun and like stupid shit stuff going down and, you know, stop so trying not to curse right now. We talked a little bit. About that. I caught myself. I'm proud. I'm very proud of myself for that. Um, you know, you're kind of experimenting though. And then as I got older, that's when it really, you know, kind of progressed fast. Um, what did that look like for you in, in high school and right before you went into the Marines? Kind of similar. I mean, the, the drinking was always the biggest thing, um, you know, for, for years. I mean, I, I, I did smoke pot. Um, I kind of didn't like it cause it made me, I guess I just have bad reactions to it. I don't like the feeling per se, but drinking you know experimented with some cocaine um but really those last two years of high school um you know i i got into the delayed entry program so i didn't want anything to jeopardize me shipping mm. out once i graduated so it was mostly drinking um yeah. and then you know I, that was a big problem in itself blackouts and you know i was always the the person i went from being the fun time friend you know like hey let's invite nick out to yeah don't tell that dude where we're going because there's going to be a problem. There's yeah. going to be a fight. Someone's yeah. going to look at him wrong, you know, and it was that chip. It was that ego. It was yeah. that, that need to feel important. So you're, you're a bit of a hothead to say. Yeah, the Matt, they, used to, they used to call me match tip. <laughs> match tip. That's the, yeah. Match tip, you know, like zero to a thousand, you know, and, and, and that's not who I am. You know, I'm a very, mm. you know, I've, I, you know, in this recovery process, I've, I've realized that I could be who I, who I am. Like, I don't need yeah. to put on, you know, any false bravado or, or, you know, make it seem like I'm this tough guy. Like I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, you know, do harm to others. I don't like getting angry. You know, I, I'm that type of guy that, you know, that'll give you the shirt off his back. And like, I thought that was always a sign of weakness. Like it was yeah. weak to cry. It was weak to, you know, speak up and say how something's making you feel but in recovery that's probably the most important thing is to you know the self-awareness and then allowing other people to really get to know you and yeah. get vulnerable with them yeah bro i think that's so huge man they, they i'm so glad you touched on that about not number one not knowing myself you not knowing yourself like I really didn't know who I was until I was 32 and when, when I got sober and, and I just, and I'm still learning every, every single day. It's an ongoing process. Like, um, you know, that, I don't think that'll stop, but you know, once, once I started to defrost a little bit and start understanding things like, yeah, man, I'm like, wait a minute, I don't have to get angry about stuff. I mean, I still get angry, but I don't have to be tough anymore. You know what I'm saying? I can admit I'm wrong. Like I can admit that I don't know everything. Like the freedom in that bro is, is absolutely huge, man. And I think it's a great point. Um, when you go into the Marines, where do you, where'd you go after that? Where'd you get shipped out to? So I was, uh, so everybody East coast, uh, East of the Mississippi goes through Paris Island boot camp. From then you go through your, you know, your, your MOS, um, you know, advanced infantry training. I was actually stationed in Camp Lejeune, um, you know, and, you know, that whole process, like going out, it, you know, in North Carolina, you know, with, with other Marine buddies and, and, you know, just feeding that fuel, the drinking and, and, um, mm. you know, 
I feel like I never, I never got a chance to, to fully, you know, to like, to progress, you know, I, I thought, you know, my plan after boot and, you know, um, senior NCOs letting me know about how much potential I have, you know, I thought I was, I was going to be a a lifer, you know, and, um, you know, it was unfortunate, you know, we were, it was like a so stupid accident, um, training accident. We were doing some night movements and, um, you know, I, I rolled my ankle on a rock and twisted my, twisted my knee and went down with, you know, with all the weight that I had on me and I snapped everything in my leg. So, you know, (sighs) surgery after surgery and, and, you know, like from that, that first painkiller, like that was it you know, and, um, what, what they prescribe you, know, you like right, right out Norco or Percocet or something stronger than that. Right off the bat, it was like Percocet, uh, tens. And then, mm. you know, after each surgery, then, then the, 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 the rocks set started to, you know, be prescribed, um, you know, in addition to, well, let's take, you know, take Ambien to go to sleep, take, mm. you know, uh, you know, some Xanax cause your anxiety, um, maintain the, per, you know, the, per, the painkillers. Um, so eventually, you know, I wound up, you know, I was honorably discharged and, you know, I find myself back home, miserable, hooked on these painkillers and, and, you know, still in a lot of pain, but also a lot of, you know, guilt and shame and, you know, mm. poor me, why me, why did this happen? You know, to me, like, this isn't how it was supposed to be very angry. And, um, you know, I wound up having two other surgeries, um, you know, so four total. And it went from, you know, doctor shopping, because eventually what the doctor was giving me wasn't enough, you know, for for somebody who was just prescribed it and was taking it as prescribed and not hooked at that point, it would have been more than enough. But at that point, you know, it was already so progressive in my in my life. So, you know, doctor shopping and you know, I wound up coming into some money and, you know, I, I I literally went through, I'd say about 10 grand in two weeks time, just Mm. getting stuff off the street. And here in my mind, I'm like, I'm set forever. $10,000. That's a, that's a lot of, I could buy a lot of pills and I don't have to worry about, you know, stealing siding or, you know, stealing from my family and helping them look for it. And, you know, like all these things that are associated with addiction that, people on the outside think, wow, look at that scumbag. Look at that terrible person. You know, how could somebody do that? And like, I, I try to tell people, and it took a long time um, for me to even understand, like, I'm not a bad person. You're not a bad dude. You know, we don't do, we're not bad people. We just do bad things in active addiction because we have one thing on our minds and it's more, 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 yeah. more. Yeah, dude, that's, um, that that's a that's a tough spot to be in i would think too and i i um you know i have have a couple homies in that spot where they have disabilities or pain or they i had one one of my best best friends was in a, a a very serious car accident that almost took his life and you know he's he's on pain meds and like you said it continues to escalate you know because eventually the 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 meds wear off so like where, where is there like a middle ground in that? Like, how does somebody out there deal with something like that? That is, that actually has pain, you know, but at the same time, you don't want to get hooked on these, on these pain meds because you see, I mean, we see every day, um, you know, where that go, where it leads to just like you said, misery, uh, people overdose on them, people die from them. You know, I told him, I said, bro, I don't want to see you die like straight up because it's, I mean, it's, um, it's a really, really tough spot to be in. Um, now, are you, are you seeing that a lot? And, you know, when you look back on it, like what's your advice or what's your thoughts on, on kind of that uh, part about it now? So, yeah, that we're seeing that a lot, you know, whether it be from, you know, veterans coming back or, you know, I mean, kids. I mean, they're, you know, a lot of people, my story's not, you know, not unique. A lot of people suffer an injury, could be playing football in high school, you know, it could be getting into a car accident and then they're prescribed all of these hardcore painkillers and they do work for pain. Absolutely. Um, but I found for myself, the more painkillers I took, the more I was able to do things on my leg resulting in injuring it even more, you know, not allowing the healing process to, you know, to take its course. And, 
And then after a while, you know, that, that flip switch, uh, switches or the, the, the switch flips, sorry, I'm a little dyslexic. Right I agree. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and, and it, and it went from, okay, well it's working for the pain, but I also feel really good and I want to hold on to this feeling, you know? Um, and then the withdrawal set in and that's, mm. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. You know, yeah. it's interesting, um, that you, that you spoke on that. Uh, a friend of mine, you know, wound up falling outside, landing on her shoulder, got frozen shoulder operation, all this stuff. And the doctor was giving her painkillers and she was on them for about six months. Um, and then, you know, she went through the healing process. She was totally fine. I never told her, you know, about withdrawal or my addiction. When she came off of them, I saw her the second day and, and I'm like, wow, you don't look so good. She's like, yeah, I think I have a, I have a, like the flu, maybe I'm coming down with something. I'm like, oh, later I find out she had stopped taking the pills, but she didn't know about yeah. withdrawal. So for, for her, for somebody who's not aware of it, you know, it's, they're just very sick. They don't, they yeah. can't associate it with, with, wow, if I get more of this in me, I'll feel way better. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's like, what, what about other alternative? I feel like it's always, you know, push push the pills, push the pills, push the pills. Well, you know, and maybe in certain instances for, for periods of time, people need those. Like I totally get that from, from a responsible standpoint, but what about the other side? I feel like we don't hear about enough too, is how about a healthy diet, exercise, um, you know, communication, like support, like those types of things together, just general, like the human body is so resilient. Like it will, it will catch like from, from eating healthy and getting just standard exercise, like things can, you know, really, really change in, in a short period of time with that. And I feel like kind of coupled together with, with medicines and stuff that might be a little bit better of an approach. And here you go, take these pills and everything's going to be fine. It's like, well, yeah. Then a year later, you know, someone's strung out, they're broke, they're, you know, suicidal, like what, whatever. I mean, it's, it's a serious, serious thing, man. I mean, what's your, what's your diet regimen, like all that kind of stuff look like? You look like you stay in shape pretty well. I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I do go to the gym. I am very active. My diet is terrible. I'm not going to announce that. I mean, last <laughs> night I, yeah, I, I went to, I stopped by McDonald's and had a Big Mac and, you know, chicken nuggets, but you know, I, I really, I do try, you know, like I'm on the road a lot. So like my vehicle is the office, um, you know, whether it's going to, you know, different detoxes or hospitals to going and meeting with families, sitting down, doing interventions, you know, um, it really doesn't stop for me. So, you know, unless I'm really disciplined, you know, I, I do, I do try to incorporate it, but I definitely, Which, that's one area that I fall yeah. short. But you're, you're aware of it though. And I think that's a huge thing too. Just, just even awareness because you're trying, like we're never going to be perfect at it. And I got to admit my diet lately has, has not been good either, but it's funny how we know things, but we just don't do them, <laughs> you know, sometimes. Well, it's, you know, my buddy's like, it's so much better and cheaper if you just meal prep. I'm like, but I don't want to meal yeah. prep on a Sunday, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah. I kind of want to watch football and, you know, I know the phone's going to ring at some point and it's just like, let me get myself together. Like Sundays are a day for me to prepare for the week, yeah. you know, um, emails, checking in with my team, spending time with family, right? Cause I have uh, two little nephews now who I'm involved in their life and, and it's so amazing. That's the miracle that happens, you know, at least for me when I got clean is like people started wanting me around once they saw the change. So I try to keep that healthy balance. Um, but yeah, I don't want to meal prep on a Sunday. I'm sorry. That's, that's, I, I, no, I, lo I love the honesty, man. And, and I've, I've, tr I've tried, I've, I always go through these cycles. It's like, oh man, like I'll go super hard for like, you know, for a couple months, man, I'm prepping, like everything's dialed in. And then one little slip up, and this is why I'm so scared of, of addiction. Like when I compare this to drugs or alcohol or anything, uh, any substance is, one little slip up with just say like food or something. I found myself, I've done this so many times where I slowly start to go back. And then before I know it, two weeks in, I'm eating just like dog shit again. You know what I mean? Like, and if, if I compare Yod that to yodels and <laughs> yeah, ch like <laughs> sugar, sugar is a big one. And we hear this a lot of time in, in recovery because sugar is a drug. 
And, and, and for me, that sugar, it's something, it's comforting. It makes me feel good. Like it's something that, that's, um, sure. it's almost like a self-destructive thing too. I don't use drugs or alcohol to self-destruct. I'll use food now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's very, because uh, that's, that's socially acceptable. I mean, it's just true. like, it's just yeah. like drinking. A lot of people in America don't believe that alcohol is this serious thing, but it's, yeah. it's it's maybe one of the worst drugs. Yeah. You can go to any liquor store, you could whatever, and you could literally drink yourself to death. And that death would be more acceptable than somebody overdosing on heroin, which is, which is so crazy to me because, mm. you know, like Shane, it, I was talking about this when I was out in Chicago last week, we, um, it, it, when I went through high school and we had those educational health classes, you know, it was, so taboo and so you know the skull and crossbones on the heroin and cocaine mm. and you know it was terrible but just smoke pot just have a drink like that was yeah. the normal back then now you know we've we've gone light years ahead and, and it's like heroin's the normal so not like maybe this new drug that they just approved will be the skull and crossbones and eventually that'll be the norm and yeah. it's just it's scary to me because like I know, you know, like I'm so afraid to use drugs again. Like, you yeah. know, I, I tell my sponsees, I tell my sponsor all the time, like, that's one thing, like, you know, I know it's always about the drugs, but it's not for me today because I haven't reintroduced them back into my life. So yeah. like now it's all about my behaviors and, you know, my attitude, my thinking. So, you know, it's just very important. Like this helps me. This is, this is the meeting right now. You know, like I, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm all for it. So I just, um, I just looked up, it's called Desuvia, by the way, too, that the drug, and I think I said it's a hundred times, it's a, it's 10 times stronger than fentanyl, but still, I mean, wow. that's, that's some scary stuff right there, you know? And I think from, from what I heard last night too, um, was that they, the, the FDA approved it to be used on the battlefield actually because it's so, it's so strong. But like I was saying earlier, like how long before that ends up infiltrating, you know, the black market and then you start seeing over, I mean, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's about awareness. Just like you said, this is a meeting right here. This is a conversation we're having. This is why you and I do the work that we do is to play our little tiny part and share our experience, our strength, our hope, and get the word out there that like, Hey, homie, there's help out there for you. Like, it's not weak to ask for help. Um, what did that look like for you when you finally like hit? Well, maybe just, maybe share the tail end of leading up to right before you, you got, um, you know, you ended up getting some help. Cause I know we've jumped around a little bit, but I want to hear a little bit more about your story. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's like when I share, I'm all over the place. No, no, it's me. It's me too, bro. That's good. I mean, we're just having a convo. So it's all, it's all good, bro. You're doing great. Cool. So, um, the tail end, the last few months, um, oh geez, it was, uh, it was a nightmare. Um, crashed two vehicles, you know, uh, attempted suicide. And, and that's how I know that, you know, like I, I'm a very spiritual guy now, like higher power. Like I know that there was something looking out for me because yeah. otherwise I wouldn't be here, but so attempted suicide, you know, crashed vehicles. I, you know, I was, I got caught stealing again from, you know, family and, 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 you know, ruined relationships. And, and that last, that last day, um, right. So like it was my father's birthday and, um, I wasn't on good terms with any of my family, uh, but they were having, you know, everyone over the house. So I went over and, um, you know, I was kicking real bad. So I, 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 and I didn't have, I didn't have anything. The only thing I had was a, a, a bunch of muscle relaxers from like a previous, you know, I, I lied to the doctor and got them for whatever. And, um, you know, um, uh, I think it was a pint of whiskey and uh, I'm like, perfect. At least it'll, it'll subside. I won't be sweating and, you know, having to, you know, throw up, like I could probably get through this. I didn't have a gift for him. You know, my yeah. gift was, Hey, I'm here, you know? <laughs> um, so I wound up taking, I, I don't know, eight like somas and, oh. and I chased it with the whiskey and that's a bad combination. Now I know, um, because within a matter of minutes, 
the the last thing I remember was just everything going like kind of dark and I felt like jello. And then um, that was it. I fell out and uh, you know, it was r right in front of my father. So um, he's yet to open any of the gifts that, um, you know, people have gotten, got him uh, for his, that, that birthday. Cause it's just too hard for him. So they rushed me to the hospital codes. Um, you know, they worked on me. I, I, I finally, I woke up. It was probably about three o'clock in the morning laying all alone in the hospital bed still going through really bad withdrawal, still kicking really bad. And, uh, yeah. you know, I kind of just had like a come to Jesus moment where I had no other ideas. I was out of ideas on how to manipulate and get more money to get more drugs. You know, I was, I was like at the end, I was so desperate. Like, you know, I, I don't know if you can identify, but like those last years, especially that last month, um, like I didn't want to use anymore, man. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't want to use, but I had to. And you know, like, um, it was just so crazy to me. Like I'll stop after this. Like, let me just get one more so I can feel better. And then it was just this never ending cycle. And, um, so fast forward a little bit, they, they wound up, um, you know, screening me. And I, and I finally asked for like real help. Cause I had tried like outpatient providers and, you know, go see a therapist and lie to them and hopefully get some meds, whatever they were at that yeah. point, you know? Um, but I went to detox and then, um, you know, from detox, I actually went to footprints to recovery and like, let me tell you like this place without, I, without them and me doing the work, of course, like I know that I'm respond. I'm the only one that's responsible for my recovery. Yeah. There's people that help, you know, that I need, but ultimately it comes down to us. Um, but they really have this unique approach, man, where it's like, we're going to focus on the drugs and alcohol and, you know, the addictive, you know, behaviors, but we're also going to teach you how to live life again, like going to the gym and, you know, exercising movement therapy, you know, let's, uh, let's teach you how to grow grocery shopping or balance yeah. a bank book and write a resume. Like, these simple things that normal people take for granted as a part of, you know, Hey, I just have to grow up and I have to pay my bills on time. Yeah. Um, I forgot about that. I thought that people were just giving me all these credit cards and, um, I didn't have to pay them. I'm like, I, you know, <laughs> yay me. <laughs> Turns out that, uh, <laughs> that, you know, reflects your credit score and it's still a process, you know, like dealing with the, the damage of my past. So, you know, I'm at footprints and, um, I just like really surrendered. Like I didn't even um, admit to anybody that I was doing heroin. This is how ashamed I was, you know, and I thought that I was the only one. Yeah. I didn't admit that I was doing heroin until I got to footprints. Like I had broken down in, in a group and like literally started crying and got up and ran to the bathroom. And one of the guys there came in after me and was like, look, man, you don't have to come in here and hide. Like it's cool to show your emotion. And like, I had a counselor come and there was like these group of guys that like, just kind of like surrounded me and just like, let that's me awesome. know that it's okay to feel right. Mm -hmm. Like that's part of the growing process. Um, so I, you know, I completed after just about three months of, of treatment and, um, you know, feeling better, uh, looking better on the outside. Cause I had went in 115 pounds, um, mm -hmm. like eyes sunken in like I, and I thought I looked good too. Once I, you know, <laughs> when, when I was out there, you know, you, you, you get that, you get that little bit so that you're not sick anymore. And you're mm. like, wow. All right. Oh, great. Let's put on the suit. Let's see. <laughs> not even, not even uh, close. Um, so I started the volunteer there for, you know, I was really interested. I, I had met the, the owner of the company when I first got there and, you know, I had told him my background and, um, you know, he's just a, he's a real, uh, like he's, he's such a supportive person in this process. Like, um, you know, that's how our whole organization is. We can talk to anybody, anytime there's an open door policy and we, we work collaboratively as one unit because it's, you know, yeah. our ultimate goal is to help people and help guide them and, 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 and help save their, their lives. So, um, and what do you, you what know, do you, way for, what do you do? So you said you travel around a lot. So what do you, what do you do exactly for footprints and where, where are you around the map? So, um, <clears throat> well, right now my, my role is, um, uh, I'm a regional outreach manager. So I, I have a team of, of people that, 
that literally are resources for, for anybody that's struggling, whether they're, nice. you know, in another facility, um, hospitals, detoxes, or, or, you know, word of mouth. We work with non-for-profits. Um, you know, we literally organize events just to get the word out there. So to give people, you know, that resource, like, listen, you can reach out. Um, you know, I, I have a work cell that is on 24 seven hmm. last week. I got a call from one of the people in the hospital and I had to put someone in detox at three in the morning. Like it, and I'm not saying that to boast. Um, like I answer the phone because I remember yeah. when I was ready, like there's that small window and we yeah. need to be, we need to yeah. be proactive. Yeah, that's um, huge. You know, so I, I go around, um, you know, mainly New Jersey, um, you know, Pennsylvania, that, that whole region and, you know, the traveling piece of it, um, you know, I just make sure that we're that as an outreach and as a, as a company, like we're doing, we're doing what we need to do. So any kind of, you know, promoting any kind of, of just getting in front of, of, of as many people as possible to, yeah. to just broadcast it. Like my my mentality is like if one person, just one person um, is listening to this and it helps one person kind of put their hand up or pick up that phone, like job done. That's, yeah. that's, you know, that's the high today. You know, do you, do you get to work with a lot of other veterans or other veterans or, or are you seeing a lot of, um, you know, clients that are coming in that are veterans? So I do, um, you know, I, I started to work with, um, you know, some nonprofits in New Jersey, uh, met some really good dudes. Um, actually, uh, my tattoo artist, um, he's, he started this, he's in the process of starting this non-for-profit um, and he's a vet. So, you know, we, um, hmm. we, we don't take the, the insurance, but the, the best part about um, working in this industry and making all these connections is that I can get you somewhere. Um, you know, we're working on, you know, doing more work with, with veterans. You know, we, we absolutely offer, um, scholarships like from inception, um, you know, of the, of the company, the start of the company, we've given out over $5 million worth of like treatment. So it's great. I mean, we really, we are a for-profit, but, but we act like a nonprofit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, I, th I think that's, you brought up a good point. You know, I can't tell you how many times people have reached out um, to me personally. And, I, and, and then I hear other stories too, you know, of not everybody has insurance. And so it's, it's really great to have resources there that can connect you, whether it's um, in your local area or out of your area that at least they know somebody who can help and like at least get, get you started on somewhere. Um, that's a big, that's a big, big issue uh, in, in the recovery community just in general. You know, what, what do I do if I don't have uh, insurance? And I don't have all the answers. I, I wish I did. Um, that's a really, it's a really tough one, but there are resources out there. And I think the biggest thing is you have to be willing. And if you're willing, yes. There is somewhere for you, someone to help you. There is something that somebody can do, but if you're not willing, it's just, it, it doesn't work like straight up. Um, I think that's the biggest well, thing. That, Don't you agree? I do. I do. And, and you know, like th that actually touches on, you know, what's, what's wrong with, with us as a whole, like that instant gratification, you know, mm. I'm still, I still fall victim to it sometimes, you know, I see that nice shiny thing. I want to buy it. Bam put it on the credit card and then I get the statement. And I'm like, uh, maybe, <laughs> you know, but the, um, if, if you don't have insurance, it is, it is more difficult, but it's not impossible. Yeah. You know, without, without having insurance, you're kind of left to the mercy of the state funding, the County funding, you know, and that's, that's on the back end. That's a lot of phone calls and, and contacts yeah. that we so make. Um, but ultimately you have to follow up. You know, so it's not just us calling and saying, hey, I'm going to send the person your way. It's, hey, this person's going to call. Like, please, if, if there's a bed available, you know, and a lot of times, you know, you, you get hit with a two week waiting list. And what does somebody do in that time? Well, you need to call morning, afternoon and evening. And if you're willing to do that, there's 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 hope. 
right? If we have, if we have hope, there's a chance um, that you can get in sooner, but you have to do the footwork. Yeah. And, and that's, um, you brought up the two week thing. That's so it's kind of crazy because I had a friend um, about, it's kind of probably been almost two years now. And I, she, she ended up going back out, but we ran into the same thing. We were working with, with, um, with County programs and in the city trying to get her a bed somewhere. And, you know, in that little period, they kept telling her two weeks, two, oh, we got a two week, you know, wait here. We got a two week wait there. And I think she was diligent at first, you know, in making the calls, but between trying to stay well, not even trying to get high, just trying to stay well, trying to stay awake. So she wouldn't get raped because of the houses she was having to stay in, you know, um, she was in a really, really bad spot and we were trying to do everything we could to, to help. I think she just got tired eventually, you know what I mean? And, and she did end up getting some help and, you know, I don't, I haven't seen her in a while, but she ended up going back out and it's, it's just a tough thing, that cycle that people fall into. And ultimately at the end of the day, the person has to have, you know, some, some responsibility and desperation. I think you said it earlier, you said you were desperate. I wanted to hit on that. The desperation that we feel like, I don't want to do this crap anymore. But, you know, I'm still doing it. I'm so desperate. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get clean and sober. I'm going to listen. I'm going to do what I'm told. I'm going to show up and the rest will fall into place. You know what I'm saying? I do. Like, they, that's what they kept drilling down in, 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 uh, in treatment, right? Like, you have to change your whole life. And, and I took that, like, I'm very simple. You know, you tell me to do something, I'm going to do it. Um, and with, with getting clean, it was wow, like maybe I need to change the wrist that I wear my watch on, you know, to just kind of like yeah. switch that mentality, put my other shoe on first, you know, you know, wake up and, and, and say a prayer in the beginning, make my bed. Not, not that I wasn't doing that already. I mean, when I was getting high, I wasn't, I didn't care, you know, like, <laughs> but I mean, just that simple act, you know, like these little things throughout the day um, that kind of like help mold you know your brain to, to to rethink it you know to restructure itself um and yet you know being desperate like i think that's the that's the biggest motivating factor for people who who want to get clean and get clean it's like i don't want to like you were saying i don't want to use anymore i just don't know how and i need yeah. help and i'm willing to do whatever yeah. like if if some guy with 20 years you know clean and sober told me to stand on my left foot for four hours and that was going to be it. Like I would have done my best, you know? Um, cause <laughs> yeah. I was just tired, man. I was tired. Yeah. I, I love that. I mean, you just reminded me of a story. My, my sponsor told me, uh, and I, I don't think he minds if I share it, but, uh, there was a guy in, in his home group, um, who had, had been in recovery for a long time. And I guess he had a, a potential sponsee come to him and say, Hey, would you sponsor me? And he said, I want you to shave your beard. And the guy was like, what? like shave my beard. And he's like, yeah, I said, shave your beard. It's like, all right. So a couple of days later he comes back and he goes, all right, I shaved my beard. And he's like, all right, cool. I'll sponsor you. I just wanted to make sure you do what I told you. <laughs> it's like, like, wow. you know what I mean? Like, it's just pretty crazy, but like, yeah, you, you, you gotta be willing to listen and, and, and to take direction, especially early, early on, you know, it's so important. Right. Like you see, you, I, I see it all the time. Like all these, all these people that are, that are, telling help how to help them like yeah <laughs> obviously you don't know just like i didn't know yeah. i just need to you know kind of just sit back shut my mouth like retain yeah. some information and then you know it's it's applying like principles and, and like these little these little you know cliche things you know i i belong to a 12-step fellowship not here to promote anything but like I'm active in step work and, and sponsorship, you know, I mean, yeah. cause if I'm not applying these things, what good is it? I could yeah. write, you know, steps all day and, and I could talk to talk, but how am I feeling on the inside? You know, yeah. um, that spiritual conditioning that, you know, cause I, I didn't have one when I was out there. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, doing the work, man. I say, I, I, I find myself saying that a lot and telling myself that too, just show up. And, and do the work and the foundational stuff you just mentioned, um, you know, 12 step meetings, sponsorship, uh, community. Uh, I mean, they're not, they're not the flashy, like, you know, I mean, but the, the, not the flashy stuff that, well, how do I get sober? Well, it's actually like, here, here's what you do. There's a couple of things. And if you're doing this stuff, 
like, and you do it for a while and you, and you commit to it, you're going to start seeing some change in your life. I can guarantee it because I've seen it through myself and I've seen it through hundreds of other people out there who've shown up and they do the work. Um, you mentioned one thing. I hate talking about this, but I think it's really important being, you know, Veterans Day. Um, it's estimated about 20 veterans commit suicide every day. You mentioned, you know, having some of those thoughts and going through some of that. Um, what's your take on that, Nick? It's, uh, you know, it, it's the lie you're telling yourself. Um, at, at least that's how it was for me. You know, I, I, I was, you know, there was so much, you know, shame and guilt. And, and then, you know, like I said, the self pity, uh, where I started to listen to that, that stupid voice in my head that I'm not worth it, that people would be better off without me. And that's, that's a lie. Like, you know, I, I, there's some things that, you know, other people can't understand. You know, if you don't go through certain situations, yeah. you may empathize with it. You, you may think you have an understanding, but you don't. But, you know, I, I just want to let people know, like, there's nothing in this world that's worth taking your own life for because mm. things will get better. You know, um, we were talking about it earlier. Like, life is beautiful as a whole. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's like, I, I wake up, I see the trees, you know, I have, I have, I have options, you know, like yeah. I, I have, I, I could, I could really do whatever I have to do today or, you know, I mean, within means, uh, of course, but, you know, like moments, there are moments in life that, that suck, you know, like there's moments and that could be a month, a year, whatever. I mean, I, I lost an uncle not too long ago. Um, as a direct result of, you know, the, the disease of addiction and like it, you know, I'm still feeling it. Um, yeah. but I'm feeling it and I'm talking through it and, you know, relationships and, you know, jobs and all these things or illnesses, like these things, they're terrible. Um, but they're moments in time, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. like, that's how I try to look at things. Like I, I, you know, I got clean and I started looking at, you know, the sun differently. And, you know, like I felt like the, the, um, like I was, uh, like had these goggles on for a long yeah. time that I couldn't really yeah. see or feel. And like, it's just incredible. I, I don't know yeah. if that answered your question. No, bro. I, I, no, I love <laughs> it. Like it, 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 you said it right off the bat. You said it's beautiful. Like life is, is really beautiful. And not to say that it's all, you know, sunshine and rainbows all the time. There's definitely challenges. I have my days. I'm sure you have yours. Um, but you, you, you mentioned this also, this too shall pass. Like it will pass. Like even, even for me, like, like I still get cravings and they don't happen near as often as they used to, you know, after five years though, every once in a while I go, man, I bet you I could have a beer. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that little thought in there, you could probably just have one. I know damn well, if I have one beer, I might be able to have one or two beers like at that moment. Uh, but within a week, you know, I'm going to be back to doing the same crap I was doing and probably 10 times worse. You know what I mean? And so yep. th those moments, it's a good example of that, of saying like, I'm having these thoughts. Let me process it. Let me be okay with having these thoughts. I know that they're not me. My mind and my spirit are not, they're not the same, you know, and, and, and I'm going to just sit back and take a breath. Maybe say a quick prayer, maybe call my sponsor, call a homie. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to let this pass because in 10, 20 minutes, you know, maybe, maybe it's an hour. It, it will pass. It will go. And I think that's such a great point. It is like, you know, it's crazy. You know, people are like, you know, and, and I, I feel the same way sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, that, that advertisement on TV of, you know, the, the whiskey or the beer or whatever, it looks good in the moment. And, and, you know, sometimes I get caught on like, well, what's going on with my spiritual condition right now? Like, why am I thinking that way? Yeah. But you know what? I'm, I'm a recovering addict. I'm always going to think that way. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's where, that's where it takes me, but I don't have to act on it today. Like I know, like you said, I know the result. It may last a day, a week, a month, a year. Like maybe I, I could drink successfully, um, you know, for X amount of time, but I have all the evidence. Like I have people in my life that have, that have relapsed with significant time. And like, I see where it goes and I'm not yeah. different than them. Yeah. Um, what do you think before and we'll, we're going to wrap this up here in just a minute, but what do you, um, you know, what do you say to someone out there who's, who's really at the end of their, end of their 
rope, you know, that's, that's desperate. That's really, you know, like you were saying earlier, that doesn't want to live the way they're living anymore, but just doesn't know how to, how to get out. Like, please, please, please just, just pick up the phone. You know, everybody's got a smartphone. You can go to footprints to recovery.com. You know, it has, it has, you know, on our website, um, you know, we have all our locations. We have our, we have our 800 number. Um, you know, it's 855-628-2899, 365. There is a licensed clinician on the other end of that line um, who will direct your call, you know, either to myself, um, another member of the outreach, and we'll, we'll guide you through this process. Like, please don't give up hope. You know, like we're, we're here to help. Um, you know, I, I just, it's so important, man. Like, like there's so many people dying and like, that doesn't need to be that it doesn't need to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you, brother. It's a, it's a sad thing, man. And, um, you know, we're, we're doing our part, you know what I'm saying? And that's the good thing is if, if everybody does their part, and, um, you know, kind of comes together. I th- and that's the one thing I love about recovery too, is, you know, no matter, you know, what color you are, where you come from, what your sex is, it doesn't, none of that stuff is, is a re- it's all irrelevant. It's all irrelevant anyways, you know, personally to me, but I think just in general from a recovery aspect and an addiction aspect, if there's one good thing about addiction and recovery is it brings people together and it, it, it creates community around that. And uh, I find it so crazy sometimes that I can connect with someone who is like, we probably have nothing in common outside of this, but yeah. this, it just makes it just this, this, this bond that's like so, so tight. It's, it's almost unreal. And it's a really, really cool thing uh, when people can step out and get into some sort of community and and get to know themselves a little bit, man. Uh, man, I, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for uh, the work that you're doing. Uh, Footprints um, uh, to Recovery. That's footprints to recovery.com. Um, dude, thank you, brother. Like, thank you so much, man. Thank you, Shane. I appreciate it, man. And, and you know, um, we've kind of formed a bond today. Like, I, yeah. you know, whatever you need, man, for me, like, I, I'm here, you know, West Coast, East Coast you know, let's just Love figure it. this thing out together. Um, yeah. I'm all about advocating it and just spreading the word. Like one last thing, I am not uh, one of those people that, you know, like to keep my anonymity. Um, I feel like I need to shout it from the rooftops. I'm very open about it. And, and that just goes back to, you know, what I said earlier, if somebody hears it, you know, throughout my daily adventures, throughout this conversation, like if it helps one person, cause that, yeah. that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, man. I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you again, Nick, for coming on. Uh, you could check us out at that sober guy.com. Connect with us on Instagram at real that sober guy and at Shane Raymer on Twitter. Peace, love and respect. Keep your blood clean.